and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to get up and running with the ASP.NET Web API. We're going to learn how we can self-host this within our own application, instead of hosting it within an IS or MVC application. We'll start off by learning how to create, our, create and set up our basic routes. We'll learn how to create our first controller in order to handle an inbound route request. And then we'll take the Web API for a spin just to see how it works. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started and let's learn how to use the Web API in a self-hosted environment. The first thing we want to do when we're using the Web API is go ahead and download the self-hosted component for Web API. So I'm going to say install package. We're going to do this via NuGet. If you don't have NuGet already installed, go out to NuGet.org, go ahead and download it and come back here. So we're going to download the Web a ASP.NET Web API dot self-host package. You can see it's downloaded and installed in a bunch of references, and it's done. Because I'm in a console application, the next thing I want to do is actually change the target framework from client profile to just the full profile. The reason for this is the ASP.NET information or assemblies are not part of the client profile, and the client profile is the default when creating a console application. Now to go ahead and actually start writing the meat of the code to allow me to self-host ASP.NET Web API, what I want to do is come into my program file. Now we're going to do this within just the main method within our program, which is our console app. Of course, in your scenario, you'd probably want to do this in a, in a different location. It wouldn't be in a console application. We're going to go ahead and create a reference to the HTTP self-host configuration. Go ahead and add a reference to that. That's in the system web HTTP self-host. When you do this, you need to give it a base address. So for our example, we're going to use HTTP localhost colon 8080. That is our base address. Let's go ahead and create our configuration instance. Now, once we have our configuration set up, we need to actually create a default route because the Web API works in a very similar manner as the ASP.MVC where it's all done via routing. That's how you find the controller you want to invoke. So we're going to say configuration.routes.map HTTP route. The map HTTP route is in the system.web.http namespace. Sometimes I've found that it won't actually find that via the IntelliSense, so you do have to add that manually. We're going to create our route, we're going to give it a name. We're going to give it a route template. This is how you can actually define the route. And we're going to say, let's go to endpoints. And we're going to say controller. And then finally, we're going to say there are no defaults. And we've now created our route. So when I go, go open up a browser and browse to localhost 8080 slash endpoints and then a controller name, it will default and find that controller and the default get method on that controller. Now that we've created our actual route, the next thing we need to do is actually spin up the self-hosting environment. So I'm going to say using self-host server, and I'm going to provide it my configuration instance. Once I've done that, all I need to do is say server.openasync.wait. That's it. Oop, looks like I do need to add another reference to system.http. Because this is a console app, I do need to actually have it um, read and wait for entry. So we're going to say console.readline. And just so we know we're actually hosting, let's go ahead and write a console.write line. Oop. Need to learn how to type here, Derek. So now we've done enough to actually start our self-hosting. However, 
we have no controllers set up and no models to be to return data out of our controllers. That's the next thing we do. Let's go ahead and first create our models. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder here. All those models. And I'm going to create a model called episode. That's more like it. Changes to a public class. And we're just going to find three properties here. So we've now created our model. If you're familiar with the WCF framework, you'd probably expect me now to start marking this model up as a data contract with data members. But with that web API, we're not going to do that at all. We're just going to leave this as this plain, if you will, POCO class. No, no attributes, no markup. Now that we've created our model, we need to create our controller. So let's go ahead and create a folder called controllers. And we're going to go ahead and create an episode controller. In order for the web API to pick up our controller, what we need to do is we need to actually have it inherit from the API controller base class. And then finally we just need to create a method. So in our method here we're just going to create a simple get method. create a reference to iList as well as our episode model we just created. We're going to call this just get all episodes. And we're just going to simply return back a list here. So let's do new list of episode. We're going to say we just create a couple of these. And that's it. We've now created our controller with a default method that just simply returns back a list. Oop, need to actually have this do a return, otherwise, I'll get a compiler. So we've created our controller. We've created our model. We've set up the self-hosting. Let's go ahead and F5 this and see what happens. So our console app is up and running. We know this because, well, it tells us we're up and running at the local host. Let's go ahead and open up a browser and let's browse to that URL. So I have my handy dandy Firefox open here. So let's go ahead and just go to HTTP, call call localhost. Go endpoints episode. And when I hit enter, what do I get? It navigates to my route and returns me back an episode. And it returns me back a list of my episodes, excuse me, and my models. Pretty cool. I didn't have to do anything special, I just routed straight to that endpoint. You'll notice here that the default is an XML. That's the default. If you want to use something like JSON, very simple. All we need to do is actually, the best way to do this is just simply remove the XML formatter so we can just use JSON. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's stop our application. Let's come into our, our hosting logic and let's go ahead and get the formatters. Let's just go ahead and remove our XML formatter. We'll kind of need to add in HTTP formatting namespace. And let's run this again. If I hit F5 this time, I get JSON as my format. So you can see that I can just simply go from XML to JSON by simply removing the XML formatter from the configured formatters within the list. So as you can see, creating a self-hosted ASP.NET Web API 
environment is very simple, very straightforward. You need to basically create a model. You need to create a controller. And you need to set up the server, the self-host server, to be running at a particular address. And of course you got to set up whatever route you need in order to route to the controller actions appropriately. So I hope you learned something, and until next time. Mm -hmm.